In this video, um, I'm going to be talking about the standard normal curve. And notice I'm saying the standard normal curve because I'm going to be using z-scores. Some, no If I'm talking about just any old normal curve, then the parameter and the, the parameters of the mean and the standard deviation could be anything. But when I'm talking about the standard normal curve, that means that I have normalized things or standardized things by changing everything into z-scores. And when I'm dealing with z-scores, I know that the z-score of the mean right here in the middle is always going to be zero. Z of the mean is always going to be zero. And then every one of these little standard deviations away will have a z-score that is that relates to it. So this would be a z-score of positive one. This would be a z-score of two. This would have a z-score of negative one. This would have a z-score of negative two. So I'm going to be using the standard normal curve for this example. So here we go. I'm going to be finding the area under the normal curve. Um, and I'm going to go with this one. Find the cumulative area that corresponds to a z-score of 1.15. Well, when you see the word cumulative area, that means that you are finding the area to the left of a particular value. Now, I highly recommend if you are finding the area under the curve that you draw a picture. Okay, the first three rules of statistics should be draw a picture, number one. Number two should be draw a picture. And number three should be draw a picture. Because when you draw a picture, it makes it so much easy, easier to understand what is going on. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, one point, a z-score of 1.5 on this normal curve. Well, I know that the z-score here in the middle is always going to be zero. So I'm going to put a, a z-score of 1.5 right about here, okay? And cumulative area tells me that I want the area that is below that z-score of 1.5. So I want this area right here that I am shading. So let me go ahead and finish this picture. And there we go. <clears throat> So my z-score of 1.15 is right here. Now, how do I find this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. There are other ways. You can use tables, um, but I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. If you're watching this, you're pretty tech savvy, and you probably have one of these calculators, these graphing calculators. So I'm going to show you how to use it. Um, if you were to hit second and then vars for variables, it takes you to a menu that gives you different normal applications or normal functions. And if we scroll down to number two here, normal CDF, that's what I'm going to use. Normal tells us that we're using a normal model. CDF stands for cumulative density function, density being area. So I'm going to select number two. And the calculator wants a left-hand boundary and a right-hand boundary. Well, if I go back to my picture here, my, right my left-hand boundary, uh, I'm not sure about. I know my right-hand boundary is 1.15. I can see it. But what is my left-hand boundary? Because technically, this curve goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and never stops. Well, what most books and teachers will tell you is that you just need a large enough number out here for your left-hand boundary if you're trying to find the area to the left. I'm going to go ahead and use nine, negative 99 as my left-hand boundary. Way over here, negative 99 is going to be my left-hand boundary. So I'm going to go ahead and type in negative 99 as my left-hand boundary. And then I need to put a comma there. The comma is above the 7, just in case you didn't know that. And then I'm going to put in my right-hand boundary, which is 1.15. Close your parentheses there, and when I hit enter, it will give me the area under the curve between a z-score of negative 99 and a z-score of 1.15. And there it is. So let me take this, pull it into my picture here. And what I now know is that the area under the curve right here, shaded in green, is about 0.8749. I'm going to go ahead and go four decimal places. That way, if I wanted to change it into a percent, I'm going to the nearest uh, one hundredth of a percent.
So this could also be written as 87.49% of this entire curve. Now I'm not going to write my answer in a complete sentence because this is just a, a basic problem. When I get to some word problems, I'll do that. Um, I'm not going to go on to this next example just yet. I'll do this one um, in a different video. So if you continue to watch my videos, you'll see some more examples like this. So this is just example number one of finding the area under a normal curve.